Welcome back to Autism at Home, brought to you by us at Early Autism Project Malaysia through our non-profit initiative, The Hope Project. My name is Josebet Isaacs and here with me today is our Autism at Home coordinator, Emma Sajida. Welcome back, Emma, and so good to see all of you. Thanks, Joe. Welcome back to our series on Autism at Home, entitled Social Skills. In the first lesson, we gave a general introduction to social skills as well as some important tips and reminders when teaching them before moving on to reciprocal actions. In the previous lessons, we talked about teaching social referencing, gestures, and then circle time. In this lesson, we will be talking about PlayStation. As children grow from learning to play with toys from the simplest cause and effect to more complex ones like pretend play, imaginary play, they can then learn to play and engage in different activities independently or even with others, transitioning from one activity to another. This is where PlayStations can come in. These are essentially little corners around your house dedicated to a specific toy or activity very similar to school. This lesson is also a refresher from our PlayStations lesson in setting up your home series. The difference to that lesson is that in this one, the emphasis is on social skills, where your child is focused not just on the activity, but also in staying with his or her friends. Why is it beneficial for children to learn this skill? Let's think about it. When children begin their years in preschool, this is one of the many activities that are usually scheduled at school. Typically, developing children usually change their interests from one activity to another. To help children who have some delays to bridge some of this gap in social skills, we recommend teaching them how to engage in PlayStation by moving together with their friends to different activities. Here are some of the benefits for children with autism to learn PlayStation, including helping them engage appropriately in play. For most children on the autism spectrum, we find that if they are left unoccupied, they may engage in the same repetitive play again and again. Or they may engage in self-stimulatory behaviours, which may in turn hinder their progression. Having PlayStations can help you in occupying your child's time meaningfully. By constantly moving from one activity to another, your child may have less and less chance to engage in inappropriate behaviours. Thirdly, PlayStations also help to prevent inappropriate behaviours that are usually caused by being unoccupied or just by boredom. And last but not least, PlayStations help children in making improvements in various developmental areas, particularly in making friendships and maintaining them. Firstly, to set up, some of the examples of PlayStations are kitchen or cooking area, arts and crafts, animal toys corner, reading corner, as well as dolls and soft toys. Feel free to download a list of suggested PlayStations from our website at www.autismathome.co. Now let's look at the prerequisites for learning this program. You've got the basic foundational skills. Other than those, your child will need some understanding of receptive language, some functional communication, some play repertoire, the ability to play for a longer duration of time, and the ability to wait. In terms of material, you can have a social story to communicate their expectations when engaging in PlayStations, such as come to play, play alone nicely, play with others, clean up when the timer goes off, and then move on to another station of their choice. Then a video model would come in handy to help communicate these expectations more clearly. The rest that you'll need are the toys and play activities. You can also use a visual schedule to prompt your child during these trials. Some tips to consider. Remember key ABA strategies of breaking skills down? Yep, this should be applied here too. This program can definitely be broken down into the number of playstations that your child is expected to engage in. Begin with maybe one activity and build this up when successes are observed more consistently. Don't forget to reward and provide sufficient practice. To keep motivation high, start with highly motivating activities. As your child is learning the skill of transitioning from one play activity to the next and engaging in the play meaningfully. That means as they are still learning these skills, it is important to include only familiar activities in the play. Should you observe your child needing to learn to play a different toy, teach him how to do so separately. Let's begin with the discrete trial training. The SD or the discriminative stimulus is the instruction. In this case, we can use phrases like, let's play. The expected response here is for your child to transition to the play area within seconds and engage in the play. 
When they complete these responses, reward them. Break down the progression of this program. You can start at the table and give the instruction to your child. Once transitions from the table are smooth, you may begin the next step of having your child start from the floor. The main SD or instruction, or more accurately the cue, would be for your child to notice his or her peer moving on to the next activity and choosing to stay together. As your child starts being more successful in these trials, fade off the verbal instruction after the first one is given. Therefore, initially your SD or instruction may be very explicit like let's play and your child follows you to play with that one activity. Then the next SD could be I want to play something else and your child is able to hear that and follow along. Initially, you may need a visual prompt. You will then increase the challenge of this program by increasing the number of transitions perhaps from two stations to three and then to four. Eventually, you would also want to generalize to different locations. Remember how kids will be like in school? Hey, I'm done with my snack. Let's go to the playground. Then after a few minutes, let's play chase in the courtyard. And of course, introduce real peers into this practice. This will be discussed further in the next lesson on peer play. Now it's your turn. Assess your child's readiness to learn PlayStations. Identify the appropriate expectations for your child based on his current skill sets. Have a plan to break down this skill in these areas, starting from the table and then start from the floor. Number of transitions of activities, moving to different locations, introducing peers into these practices. Break down the areas needed and plan your reinforcements for PlayStations. Begin teaching. So well, that's it on PlayStations. In the next lesson, we will be talking about peer play, so stay tuned. Also, thank you for your support and with the amount of interest we have received online, we have actually started providing online services and currently work with clients in other states of Malaysia, New Zealand, Philippines, Singapore, Switzerland, Indonesia and China as well. So do scan this QR code and get in touch with us for more information. If you haven't already, do check out our free online resource platform, Autism at Home, which has all the corresponding articles and downloadables for you. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, follow us on Instagram and Facebook to stay updated. Thank you all for watching and we will see you soon.